and a black man walked in front of him and he spit out three times because he thought that was a jinx. And even back then, how I thought it was dreadful what he did. How I got that feeling, I, I don't know. Yeah. See, I think something that, that there, I think that's interesting because my parents called black people schwarzes, which right. is a Jewish, a Yiddish word for black. Mm -hmm. And my father talked about black children as pickaninnies. And I was terribly offended, but I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I could have just accepted my parents' view but the so of the social world, but I didn't. And I didn't have a lot of experience. There was only one black boy in my do, high school. Do you remember, what about your friends growing up? Do you remember if they had the same views as, as their parents, which I, or I, you, I, or? It was nothing that I ever just, thought about. I never talked about it till I was <clears throat> grown up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was ashamed of it. <coughs> um, I mean, one day we were coming back fr in the car from somewhere, maybe visiting some, and we stopped to eat, and Elizabeth, who was our, quote, maid, she lived with us, and we loved her. My brother and I loved her. And we, my parents and I, we ate in a little restaurant, and they made her sit outside to eat, oh, they would. She was black. Yes, okay. and uh, that hurt me. I mean, I remember that forever because I thought that what? How could you treat someone that way? And how could my parents allow that? I was I was offended, mm -hmm. but I didn't tell them. I mean, I did. I don't think I did. I don't know. So there was a big gap in perception. Um, and yet, it's interesting that in this country today, there are many people, obviously, who never made that the leap that Vic and I did for some reason which we can't explain. Yeah. I had an uncle, Abe, who had an Army and Navy store in Harlem, and he became the wealthy he just about supported everybody in the family. And he had a, a guy called Harry. Oh, I remember. It was a, a black guy. And I taught Harry how to speak Yiddish. And I called him Herschel. <laughs> and I'd say, Herschel, how's Geschäft? Geschäft means how's business? And then I'd teach him to say Bakak. <laughs> and I say, Herschel, how's your chef? And he would say, my God, which means shitty. You know? <laughs> but, uh, the, I mean, the family was supported by the black community who were making my uncle a rich guy. That's a longer answer than you expected. Well, we got some interesting answers. Well, okay, so sort of going off that, um, one of the things that I wanted to ask ask you guys, you guys, I mean, clearly were ahead of the times in a certain sense and that you sort of figured this stuff out by yourself on a certain level. So how did you sort of perceive and think about everything that went on in the 60s um, in terms of like Martin Luther King and all of these movements um, that were sort of based in trying to get equality for these people? And had you... Did you see that coming in some ways? Was Did it take you by surprise? Was it like a finally kind of reaction for you guys? Um, I don't know, like what did what did you think about that? How'd you feel about your kids participating in it? I, I think that it was like a natural thing to take, to get involved in, because we, we took you guys mar on marches. Yeah, you remember that. So it was like a way to express some of the things that we may have been feeling and thinking for a long time. And now there was um, support yeah. for that and a way to express it. So, yeah, I think that, oh, other people feel the way we do. Um, I remember the guy 
who lived next door to us, Mr. Ritz, mm -hmm. and we had an argument about segregation. And he was, he was all for it, and we were all against it. And I remember him standing on the porch, and we were arguing this point. And I thought, oh, I live next door to somebody who believes in segregation? I was horrified. Um, he moved. <laughs> well, actually, he, he, he retired and died. That's what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. So, what did you think? Well, you know, I, I, I really don't know how I developed my liberal bent. I don't. I was always, you know, defending the underdog. Uh, I went into the social work field because I wanted to work with people. Uh, how I developed that, I, I do, do not know. Uh, it just seemed the natural thing to do that uh, I mean, Martin Luther King was a hero, you know. Uh, Kennedy was a hero. Uh, uh, I can remember I'll never forget the uh, three days after Kennedy was assassinated. Uh, I mean, it was a grim, grim part of our lives. Uh, but I, I, I do not know how that happened. I, uh, over the years, uh, my energies go toward defending people who need help. So I have one sort of follow-up question, too. I was talking with Grandma a little bit about this last night, about all of the protests that are going on now in on college campuses and on my campus, there's been um, like a pretty big protest going on. But I'm wondering if you guys see any differences between the civil rights movements of the 60s and the protests that are going on now, or I don't know, maybe you haven't been following it close enough. Um, or maybe it's, I mean, I'm sure it's not getting the same national news. Co I mean, it is getting some of that, but in terms, the civil rights movement was maybe at a whole other level, but I'm wondering, um, like, how, what differences you guys perceive in these two mm. things? It's, it's. <clears throat> I think what's different now, it, the '60s was a whole big social change revolution, not only in civil rights, but in social mores. I mean, there was a whole thing about, um, you know, uh, birth control was much more available, the whole thing with the pill, kids being much more um, sexually active than, and more, that kind, that was a, it was all mixed together. So it's very different now because that's old history, big deal, the pill. Yeah. Um, so I think now there's more um, revealing of the, of the harm that's caused to people of color that people have to confront. And there's been this endless news about the brutality that's been fostered uh, and ha trying to hold the police accountable for their actions, and I think that's just a very different, um, a different kind of feeling. In the 60s, it was all loosey-goosey stuff of people. It's a different, it was different. So you think it's more focused now? Yes, and I think it's more focused on the, on the, the, of the, the on the pain that it causes people. And I mean, pain to the body, death, and and the brutality of um, not um, the sixties more more cockeyed. I mean, there were drugs and people taking things and acting kooky, and uh, it was now it's more 
It's really serious stuff that has to do with your life and death. I don't know, that's my I perception. I think there's a lot more activity going on now. Different, a yeah, different, a different uh, quality. More, yeah. When I, I, in the 40s, when I went into the Army, I was, uh, my first assignments were in North Carolina. And I think I told everybody this story. I got on a bus and I was offended by the blacks having to go to the back of the bus. So I went in the back of the bus and I sat down there. And when I got off the bus, a white guy says to me, uh, you know, they will think that you're taking one of their seats rather that you're identifying with them and want to protest what's going on. Mm. And uh, I mean, the, the racism back there was very overt. I had a special assignment in North Carolina, uh, in uh, Texas rather, Fort Worth, Texas, and I shared a house with three Southern guys who were the nicest guys you ever want to meet. But they would say to me, Vic, if a nigger came into that front door, we'd throw him out. Yeah, I mean, total blunders. And I think as time goes on, there's much more focused uh, groups that are really working toward more equality in many, many areas, you know. But I, but I think that the racism that was spoken in those days, people don't say it now, right. it just went underground. Mm -hmm. People still feel it, yeah. but they're more devious. And in a way, that's worse in a, in one sense because it's not there; it's right. hidden. And then it comes out in all kinds of sneaky ways that are terrible. <coughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, what all those stories about brutality—that's another way of it coming out. That's mm -hmm. so dangerous and um, subconscious. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I have another question. Complicated. Yeah. Um. What high school 